and it's all yours. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of recap of last week. Uh, a, a lot of good things and some things that obviously we need to, to correct, but um, had a little bit of adversity with uh, some of the guys early on in the game, but really liked the fact that we had a whole bunch of guys step up, um, play some really incredible ball for us that were have seen really limited action and uh, found a way to win a ball game. So uh, excited about this week. Uh, we, we know how this game's going to go down. Um, exciting to get back on the road again and, and to actually just, just play another game, which is, which is great for us. Okay, uh, please raise your hand for any questions for Coach um, or Raylan. Um, I'll keep you posted if we get Drake on here. So um, we'll start with Adam Grossbard. Raylan, just after, you know, kind of that limited playing time as a true freshman, what's it been like, you know, being out there every snap? Do you feel you know, like, how, how do you feel you're fitting into this new defense? Uh, I feel like I'm fitting in pretty good. Um, I mean, football is football. Um, I feel like, you know, if you can play, you can play. So I feel like um, I'm fitting in pretty good. I got the system down. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm grasping. Uh, Coach Orlando has talked about, you know, your kind of study habits off the field. Like how much would you say you're watching film, reading playbook and your spare time away from team meetings and practice? Yeah. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's not academics, um, you know, I'm always looking to get better. You know, I'm a true believer in hard work and, you know, like coach always preaches, you know, the, the uh, football guys, you know, uh, they're going to they're going to pay off. if you, you put the work in, you know, you get in what you put up. I mean, uh, you get out what you put in. So, you know, I'm a firm believer in that. So I try and get in as much uh, film work as I can. Hey, Ray, let them see your beautiful hair, man. Pull that hoodie down, please. Let them see it. Thank you. Boss. There it is. <laughs> I love it. Okay, uh, Mark Culkin, you're up. All right, good morning. Uh, Coach, can you talk about the development of the defensive line? From, from these eyes, that they've been the most productive group on the field for the first two games. What have you seen, uh, particularly from, from a player like Nick Figueroa, who's just burst on uh, since you've arrived? Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, Vic has done a really good job with the group and um, – you know, the, the toughness aspect of what you're seeing is a result of a whole bunch of hard work during practice. And, and Nick is an example, you know, obviously Marlon Tooley is another guy that I think is, is, you know, the sky's the limit with him, but it's practice habits. It's um, if you, if you had the ability to come watch these guys day in and day out, it's really not a surprise to be honest with you. Nick is, is a tough dude, Marlon. I mean, all the guys that are doing some really good things are, are essentially our toughest guys. So um, it, it doesn't surprise me. And they, they play really, really hard. They play together. They understand what we're trying to do. But it just goes back to the training part of it. And they, and they do it every day in practice. And for Raylan, how are these guys making your job easier? Um, are, are they opening up those gaps where you're able to, to, to see the ball carrier, uh, read, the, read the quarterback? What are they doing to, to make the game easier for you? Uh, yeah, most definitely. You know, when you got you, when you got some uh, vets in front of you, you know, it makes my job a lot easier to make my reads a, a lot more cleaner and quicker. So, you know, when you got vets like Nick and Marlon, uh, uh, Brandon Peely, uh, Connor Murphy, dudes like that in front of me, um, those dudes help, you know, keep the old linemen off me and keep me clean. So it, it's a it's a um, it's a blessing really to have dudes like that in front of me. Okay, uh, Drake has joined us also, so you can uh, ask questions either Drake or Raylan or Coach, and we'll, we'll go next to uh, Eric McKinney. Coach, wh where did you see the most positive growth from that, that first game to this most previous game? Yeah, I thought um, the, the physicality part of it, um, and just I think just the response overall. Now, we did some things that you know, we had some explosive plays and then there was a couple explosive plays that we actually just had, you know, I, I don't want to say bad luck. It just happens in the game where, you, you know, uh, you get a couple penalties. But I just thought we played looser and I thought we played faster and I thought we played physical. And just some of the things that we can clean up were, you know, if it's third and 16 and, you know, we, we've got a guy, you know, dead to rights on, 
on a tackle, let's get them down. You know, the, just a couple things here and there in a game that are really the difference between extending drives and giving up points and not giving up points. So, but I thought we were maybe a little bit too uptight in game number one. I thought we relaxed a little bit, especially in the beginning. And then we just kept throwing punches left and right and, you know, found a way to win the ball game. So I think you're going to see progressively us continue to gain confidence. And, and, and once again, just goes back to kind of what I said last week was, this is really, you know, with, with the COVID and, and our inability to have spring football, this is really week five for us, even though for everybody else in the country, it's week 12, you know, and to go into, you know, having a preseason. And some of the guys actually had spring football. So I think we're continually learning how we want to do things. And that comes through great practice habits, just like Ray talked about beforehand, is just continue to train that way because the game should be easier. Then I know it's only a two game sample size, but but have you seen anything kind of Pac-12 specific in, in these games that maybe you hadn't seen at, at other stops? No, it's just it was pretty unique, you know, going into, a, you know, a shift trade and motion team to, a, you know, a, a spread team. So it, it's kind of very similar to the last place I was at in terms of just every week is, is another creative offensive coordinator and another you know, situation that it's different. So you don't get a big run of the same type of offenses. And it'll be just like this week where you're going to see somebody get in the huddle, you know, play big boy ball with you. And then in some aspects, get into some spread concepts and do that. So I think this league and the, and the last league I was in, are, are there's some similarities in terms of the hiring an offense corner, but they're all very creative. And that's, that's the one thing about these two leagues is you're going to get some of the best offensive minds in the, in the country and, and they're going to really try to strain you. Uh, let's go to Ryan Karchi. Good morning, guys. Uh, Drake, how different is the role that you stepped into in, the, in this new defense? And what sort of improvements or changes did you focus on over the course of this offseason? Uh, my role in this defense hasn't really changed as much. Uh, I would say they just let me play more and just rather than thinking about anything. So I like that a lot more. Just just having me play free and just <clears throat> letting me do what I do. And uh, over the offseason, I really haven't been working on anything different. But now that in our scheme, uh, we got a little more dropping. So, I mean, I've been working on – just trying to, you know, drop now, and uh, that's about it. I know you you sort of transformed your body over the course of the <clears> offseason. <throat> Has that been noticeable while you've played that you're playing a little lighter? Uh, just the quickness aspect is just about it. That's the only thing I really see is just me feeling a lot quicker off the edge and just a lot more twitchy. And Todd, what is it? What's been your impression, just in general, of of Drake, especially over these first two games, and, and anything in particular you can see that he can improve on even moving forward? Well, there's always improvement with it, and, um, but to me, he's he's got really really good vision, and and I think that's probably the the thing that good players have that's really non-coachable. So he, he can see everything, and you know, and, and can adjust, and as the you know. Like, like you said, I think the, probably the biggest thing that, that he has changed is just his twitch. You know, last year, probably a little bit heavy. Uh, you know, I'm not completely sure in terms of, you know, the amount of weight, but, you know, he's – but vision. And that that's the part of it. And you can always get better. I mean, there's always fundamentals, techniques that you can get. You can get bigger, faster, and stronger. All those things that go into play. But, you know, playing some really good ball right now. Uh, shotgun. Todd, how did the injuries that you had in the first half kind of change what you were trying to do, especially losing a guy on each level? Yeah, well, it was, you know, it turned around and and Drake was on a bike and Tally was someplace else and EA was someplace else. And, and the really cool part about it is it just goes back to practice habits. You know, it, you it, these guys, the locker room doesn't lie, you know what I'm saying? So if, if they go out there and they're not getting it done in practice and more than likely they're not going to play. So if they're practicing well, then it's when 
you know, Ray's a good example, Scott, where it's like, it's not, oh no, it's, oh yes. You know, and he's running it off the sidelines. He's, he's getting 47 plays for a guy that hasn't ever played the position before. And he does a really great job. And it's just things like that. And it just goes back to accountability and putting the, you know, the equal amount of work that everybody else is doing, but that's all done kind of behind the scenes. What you see is, you know, if a guy jumps on the field for us, that means he's ready. And we feel really good about that. He's going to do the things that, that are going to be needed to, to help us win. But it was really cool. I mean, nobody flinched. And those guys ran off to the bench. We were in a little bit of scramble, and we had a couple guys that that got dinged up in terms of some of the personnel groupings that we have in. But we found a way. And I was really, really proud of those guys that came in off the bench. And and we did no hesitation at all, went in there and gave us some really good snaps. And then, you know, Abdul Malik McLean, uh here that he enters the transfer portal, where does the loss of him leave your linebacker depth, especially with the injuries that you've had at the position? Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at some guys and with Malik, we're wasn't the best of luck. And it's, uh, you know, it's something that happened. And, um, but we've already started that adjustment without getting too detailed with, you know, the maneuvers that we're going to make. We've already started that in the last couple of days of, of practice. Uh, Ryan Young. Uh, Raylan, what's been your self-assessment through two games and what's been the biggest lesson you've gotten out of this, uh, the start of the season in the area where you're kind of challenging yourself moving forward? Um, um, personally, I've been, personally, I've been, I've been, uh, personally, I've been feeling, uh, personally, I've been feeling, I've been feeling my ankles, my ankles, ankles well. um, you know, I wasn't very happy these past two games, uh, self-assessing myself, you know, uh, when it came to, you know, uh, getting to the ball as far as my angles you know i was getting cut back a few times i wasn't really happy with that uh, uh just stuff like that you know i wasn't i wasn't very oh yeah in the first game i wasn't very happy with my uh shocking sheds i wasn't i wasn't pleased with myself in that aspect but you know i i grade myself pretty hard you know i try and be my uh, own worst critic because I, i'm a, uh, i'm a firm believer in being a perfectionist so you know, even if I'm not going to get there, I'm at least going to try and get there. So, you know, I, I grade myself pretty hard each and every day. Uh, Ryan Young, I put you on mute because you were getting feedback. Did you have a follow-up? I did, yes. Uh, Todd, you talked last week about the linebackers and challenging that group. What's the one area you want to see them take the biggest step in moving forward? Well, it's probably that comes down where Ray just, just talked about. It's just better angles to the football. They, they played – a ton better, you know, in this game, the, the physicality part of it, um, everything that went along with kind of what we talked about beforehand. So really, really proud of what they did. Just these, these minor things that uh, we can get them cleaned up or the difference between first downs and non first downs. And, uh, but they're all correctable. Here's the really cool part about it is we can go out there and like, this isn't one of these ability deals where it's like really at the end of the day, we don't have the ability to do it. It's not that at all. It's just, they're all correctable fundamentals and techniques. And we've already started them last week or this week, yesterday, you know, in terms of our individual and just cleaning these things up. And, and, and when we get these things, you know, collectively done, we're going to be in good shape. So we just got to keep work. I think Ray's great because, you know, he, he just said exactly the, what we all feel is like, we're, you know, we're not in this business to be average or a little bit of, of a good we want to try to be great and just work at it every day and piece it together and just just keep practicing as hard as we can and and we'll get rewarded. Uh, let's go back to Adam Grossbard. Drake, in the uh, first game you were getting good pressure, but just nothing really showing up in the stat sheet. Second game's kind of a different story. Did it feel like you were just a little bit more comfortable in that second game, or was it just a matter of you got to the quarterback? I would say it's just a matter of just me getting to the quarterback. Uh, Cause sometimes you get there, you know, they just throw it away. But uh, this week I, you know, I was getting home and I mean, that's about it. I, nothing really I can say about like just me getting there. Did it feel at all like you were just more comfortable in the role in that second game? Uh, no, nah, I feel, I actually feel the same every game. It's just that, uh, just like I said, it's just like I just was getting home in Arizona at uh, ASU. He was getting the ball out kind of quick. But, um, you know, I feel comfortable every game going into it. 
you know, I just never really think about, uh, you know, like my opponent, really. I just do what I need to do for my team. Akili. Hey, Todd, given what you said about the long off season, how would you assess the defensive speed right now and maybe the ability to read and react? Well, I think it's going to get better. I mean, obviously, we're we're kind of a work in progress right now as we continue to get reps, um, but it will. I've been in this system for, for a long time, and I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to, you know, the kids kind of learning the way that, I kind of process how we want to call the game and the things that we want to do. We want to try to play explosive football. I mean, on, on defense. So create TFLs and get people into predictable third down and, and then come after them. So I, I think it'll get better as we continue on this season. Um, but like I said, when, you, when you're in week five, that's, that's where we're at. I mean, if you take out the first couple, you know, the first week of fall camp where you're not physically able to tackle people, that's where we're at. So we'll get better. Uh, shotgun. Todd, is there any concern about Marlon Tui Pelotu? He set new career high snap counts each of the first two weeks, and he, he's been a guy that's faded a little bit in the second half. I know it's a little bit shorter season, but any concern with the workload he's had early? No, I don't. Hey, that guy's a warrior. I mean, to me, it's – I don't – and we're, we're being smart with him during practice. Uh, trust me on that. You know, we're – all those guys that are – you know, I've got their <clears throat> actual rep count right in front of my desk right now of – you know, how many, how many guys play. So you might not necessarily see it on Saturdays, but you see it during practice or we're trying to be mindful of guys like that just to make sure. And like I said, it's a little bit different for us too, because, you know, if this was a normal season, if this is week 12, yeah, absolutely. But this is our second game going on to our third game. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, this offense is going to be a little bit different uh, than what we saw last week. You know, that's, that wasn't really, really paced last week, but it was still a high amount of plays. Um, but this game, you know, he, he's going to have to play <clears throat> really well because, you know, these guys are going to run the football right at us. And can you talk a little bit about the adjustment you guys made in the second half, uh, per, to particularly on third downs, using a spy occasionally? Yeah, you know, it's uh, kind of got out of rush lanes a little bit, and then we kind of threw that one in, and um, it creates a little bit uh, – some advantages for us, especially for a guy like Drake on the outside. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where at first initially we didn't, didn't think that we would need it, but we got into some, some things that they, you know, he saw it and some of the max drop stuff that he took off and ran. And then it was just kind of a feel deal where it was like, okay, now this is really starting to hurt us. You know, in the beginning of it, you kind of sit there and go, how much did this hurt us? And then all of a sudden this is starting to hurt us and now we're going to change. So it was, you know, it wasn't one of these things that was a, a magical thing. I mean, everybody in that stadium saw that we needed some help with it, so we did it. Uh, Ryan Karchi. Todd, Chris Steele's had a couple penalties over these first couple of weeks. How do you balance with him just telling him to, to keep discipline, but also to not really affect his aggressiveness because he is that kind of player? You don't. I mean, honestly, you don't. We just try to show him what – you know, how things are going to be called, you know, you want guys to be aggressive. I mean, the, the, it's, it's hard. I mean, you can, you know, it's um, if you get too much into a corner's head and make them soft, you, know, you you never get that back. So all we're doing right now is be aggressive, but understand that if that head's not back for the football, that's going to get called. If you get a little bit too handsy, that's going to get called. And Denny, what he has to understand that is that those officials will get all this tape, going into the game and, and you know, the opposing coaches, we all do it. To, if we see something on film that we're going to tell the officials pregame, hey, keep an eye on this stuff. So it's just technical stuff, but we, we want them to be aggressive. Uh, there, there's no doubt. I mean, if, if, if all of a sudden we make Chris passive and he's giving guys, you know, seven yards of cushion, then it ain't, it's not going to matter because they'll catch every ball. So don't try to overcoach it. Just um, show them the film and show them what officials are, are calling and I thought they were consistent. And, you know, they called it, and and we'll get it cleaned up. Let's go back to Ryan Young. Todd, I know it's different personnel at some key spots, but Craig had a lot of success against Utah in the bowl game last year. How much input does he had uh, this week based on the prep he did for that game? A lot. 
a lot, a lot, because the lot, one thing that he, the one is, thing that he, had, but he's on there again. Okay. Uh, the one thing that, <clears throat> that he has is he, he's seen these guys um, physically too. So you got to remember, you, you look at their games and this, this turns into a third opponent that we have not seen their personnel, you know, off a of game tape from this year. So it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, when you think about it that way, but, you know, we're going to go through the things that, you know, it, especially when you get into a bowl prep, when you actually have time. So when you have eight to 10 days that really take a look at somebody, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what's going on, but he's the last guy that's like physically seen these guys, you know? So, um, you know, as we go through the film, he's, he can tell us things that he saw from that game and, and can tell us about the personnel too. And then, uh, and sorry for the feedback, I'm in the car. What's, what's the process of scouting the quarterback you might face this week? How much do you try and look at with each of those guys? Or do you kind of <clears throat> make, make an assumption, hone in on one guy? No, you got to look at them all. You know, you, you just don't know. So, you know, you go into it and, and really at the end of the day, you got a good beat on everybody. And then you go out there and you watch them in, in pregame and, find out who goes out with the ones, you know, when they're doing their team reps and, and then kind of piece it together. And then you find out who's going to be the first guy that comes off the bench when they line up in their very first play, but you got an idea. You always have to do that, you know, with, with first games, you know, we had to do that versus some of the younger kids at uh, Arizona state at, at receiver, like, you know, LV and Johnny and those guys. So, you know, you, you get an idea of what they've done in the past off a of different tape. Okay, we have no more questions. Uh, Coach uh, Raylan, Drake, thank you very much for joining us. Great job. Uh, reminder to the media, tomorrow, uh, 8 a.m., we'll have Coach Helton with us. Um, and uh, with that, uh, have a great day, everybody. And, and again, thank you. Appreciate it.